Give me a wave. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> Steve, we can't hear you. Sure, if you'll have to unmute. Steve, we can't hear you. Steve, we can't hear you. Oh, Steve. Steve, you'll have to unmute. <laughs> unmute your yeah, iPad. Yeah. That's there it. we go. Sorry, technical issues. This is our first, let's be realistic, learning curve. Um, so, just to explain, for those of you who are joining us for worship via Zoom, we can see you on the screens in church and we can hear you, um, so best behaviour. And then likewise for those of you who are joining us in worship in the physical building, for some of you, the back of your heads um, can be seen because if you turn over your shoulder, there's a little camera above the exit sign which means that we're on the screen and then there's another camera focused upon me. So welcome to worship. We might need to turn down just a smidge frame because there's a little bit of an echo. So hopefully you've all got an order of service. Just to explain, I haven't grown a beard overnight, so I've got a face mask. We'd strongly encourage to use them, um, but I look like a bank robber. Um, and in terms of being physically present in the church, there's a good distance. However enthusiastic I am this morning, my spittle isn't going to reach Lindsay or Keith and me. Um, so we've been strongly encouraged to wear masks for the, all the reasons that have been presented to us in the news. And the next Sunday is compulsory. We're legally required to wear masks. So whether you're in the building or whether you're with us via Zoom, let's turn to our opening prayers. And if you'll see on the order of service, there are points where we invite the Zoom congregation to join with us in responses. For those of you present in the building, if you join in and you weren't involved, we invite to do so. And that will help the service to feel together. Can I just do a sound check? Can you hear me in Zoom? Okay. Yes, we can hear. Yeah, I've got some thumbs up. Excellent. Okay. So just gauging how loud I need to be because I'm not shouting at people here. Let's pray. Let's enter into worship. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. I'm going to read to us now a passage from the book of Ezra, which I hope you'll see why I see a real resonance with our circumstances today. This is Ezra chapter 3, verses 10 to 13. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments and their, with trumpets, and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with cymbals, took their places to praise the Lord as prescribed by David, king of Israel. With praise and thank thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord. He is good. His love towards Israel endures forever. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy. Our, our theme this Sunday is we return to the physical church building, or some of us do anyway, for worship. Our theme is celebration and more. And I think the mixed emotions of that are captured beautifully in our reading. They were in a similar circumstance. 
I'd been in exile. Everything I'd known had been thrown up in the air. Everything was different. Everything was disorientating and uncomfortable. Can you relate? And then they begin a journey of restoration. And the first step is laying the foundation stones for the temple. It's, it's not the end of the journey. If you read on through Ezra and Nehemiah, there's still a period of opposition where the rebuilding of the temple has to stop for you. There's still persecution and opposition. There's still that sort of reacting and responding and becoming comfortable to a new norm. But in this moment where the people of Israel come together in the first time for the worship, there's both mourning and celebration. For some of you, I'm aware, you haven't been online. Today will be a really significant day where you feel like, oh, at last, I'm reconnecting with the church family. And for some of you, as you celebrate that, I'm conscious that for yeah. others of you in the Zoom service or joining us via Zoom, I want to say, maybe there'll be that extra twinge of, this is different. And almost, I don't mean this the wrong way, it's sort of jealousy because some of us are here and you're still there and some of you maybe are having to isolate and it's not your choice. I just want to encourage us that both those feelings are valid and right. Both those feelings are natural. And actually, for many of us, we probably feel both. But in that, we're here to worship. And within that mixed emotion, Jesus will meet with us. His Holy Spirit doesn't live in a building. His Holy Spirit isn't limited by time and space. I think that's one of the things that we've learned from this time. Is that worship is a privilege and a blessing and a gift. And it's so much more than just an hour on a Sunday. If you notice in our reading, part of the liturgy in that reading from Ezra was that the people sang to the Lord, he is good, his love toward Israel endures forever. Well, now we know where our Kenyan brothers and sisters got it from. I'm taking back all credit we've given to them. No, we knew this, didn't we? It's biblical. It's the natural response of worship. If you'd like to turn to your order of service, let's do our opening response. God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. God is good. All the time. For that is his nature. Wow. wow. Okay, I can't resist. There was a good wow here. We'll, we'll, we'll just do that for a moment for those present in the building, and then we'll listen to your wow. And see. We'll, we'll make this a competition. <laughs> well, that is his nature. First in the church. Wow. wow. Okay, and then for those of you joining us, Ryzen, for that is his nature. Wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit muffled, but it was a good effort. Right, our opening prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of worship together today. And as we enjoy this freedom, please help us to remember others who worship this day in fear or in prison. Lord Jesus, though we are scattered worshipping in our homes and in this building, confirm in us the fresh, the deep truth, that we are the church, that we are your body, that each of us are living stones, uniquely shaped, uniquely gifted, that in our coming together, we are the temple of your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, we come together to worship you. Amen. 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 We're going to be a
I'm going to say we're going to sing. Some of us are going to sing now for our first hymn. Unfortunately, for those of us gathered in the church building, we're, we're not allowed to sing. But the words will be on the screen and you'll hear the music. Just to remind you, for those of you joining us via Zoom, you can sing with gusto, um, but you won't be assaulting or blessing the ears of the congregation here. You'll be muted as we normally are, so you can sing with freedom in your homes. Um, but again, in this season, we've learned that worship is so much more than singing. But let's allow these words to call us to praise and worship in our hearts. Maybe you might want to surreptitiously, very quietly hum. I'm going to hand over to Paul now, who's our co-host, and he's going to share screen. And hopefully, we'll be able to hear and see the world.
together to worship. That's why we're here. That's why we're gathered together. We're here to worship Jesus, to crown him with many crowns. It is good to be together. It is good to be with Jesus. <clears throat> We're going to have our first Bible reading. Our first Bible reading is going to be brought to us by our church warden David. So David, if you'd like to unmute, then hopefully we will hear you in the church building as well. Over to you, David. First reading is from Matthew, chapter 13, verse 14, verses 13 to 21. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them to me, he said and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied and the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. Number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, now I'm going to hand over to Jane, um, who's back from a little time away in Wales, I think. Jane, can you hear me if you'd like to unmute? Yeah, morning, everybody. Have we got any children to give us away this morning? I've got two here. Any more? I can't see any on my screen. Can you just change it to gallery view? So yeah. I can see. Okay, we've got a few activities to do this morning based on the story that David just read to us about the feeding of the 5,000. And if you've got Lego with you this morning, uh, perhaps you'd like to recreate that scene of the feeding of the 5,000. So you're going to have to gather a lot of minifigures uh, mm. to recreate that scene but perhaps you could either just do the bread or the fish or actually do a scene of the people being fed. Um, there were also some attachments which maybe you printed off. So there's one uh, to do using Play-Doh. Um, we've got a picture of some open hands there and you can use Play-Doh to make loaves and fish um, or your favorite kind of food and then you, you put it into the hands and pray for people who don't have enough food. So there's a little prayer activity there to do. There's also a colouring activity to remind us what Jesus did was absolutely incredible. And uh, this verse tells us nothing is impossible with God. So there's a colouring sheet there to do as well. And then thinking about how the young boy brought his food to Jesus and uh, shared it. And then Jesus did this amazing miracle. Uh, perhaps today you'd like to make something to share with somebody else. So whether that's some food or something, or you could make a friendship bracelet. So there was a pattern attached as well to make a friendship bracelet for somebody and give that away to someone as a gift. So there's a few things to do this morning to keep you busy and engaged in what we're doing in our service. See you later. See what you Thank you. And um, all of us here in church, send our greetings to, to you and your household. Just to explain for those of you who maybe haven't been attending Zoom services, we can't have children's church, we can't have Sunday school groups, 
So what's been happening over the weeks with Jane has been sending out activity sheets. And then um, we've seen some very amazing creations from Lego and things. So you may get some in the service, but it's August. So I think quite a lot of our, our children are away. But thank you, Jane. Let's re-enter into prayer for a moment. Today is Collins. Lord God, your son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now turn to something that has become a real highlight of our Zoom services. If you've watched the recordings, you'll have been assaulted by the experience that it is to sing happy birthday, but this could be the week to celebrate a birthday because you can be, oh no, we're not allowed to sing here either. I was thinking we can celebrate here. No, we can't. Okay, you're still going to be assaulted by Zoom. I'm going to have to look at the screen carefully. Is there anyone who's got a birthday? Give us a shout. Yeah, it looks like Andrew and Maggie. I have Andrew. I'm happy to be humiliated. <laughs> Is it Andrew's birthday? No. Yeah, it's Andrew's. Anybody else submitting? We've got two birthdays. You've got two birthdays. We don't have some. Who have you got? We've got Henry last week and Joseph next week. So we've got Henry and Joseph and Andrew. John Gibson, I hope you're keeping a list of names or Alison's writing these down. Paul, do you mind if we switch screen just to see if there's anyone on the other screen? Hi, Hi Gabriel, are you waving to us? How old are you? Hi! Five, Gabriel's five, okay. It was my birthday. It's your birthday, yeah. And we can see you in church. If you can spot Gabriel's in the box of Central Square yeah. in his white shirt. Looking very proud. <laughs> right then. Okay, we always hand over to our tame choral chorister, John Gibson, to give us a note. Can you and those of you in the church building, brace yourself. Your food is sung by Happy Birthday. It's an interesting experience, but it's the heart that matters. Over to you, John. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve, we just need the other name Andrew, Henry, Gabriel. Andrew, Gabriel, Joseph, Henry, I think I got that. Joseph. Joseph, Henry. I don't remember. Wow. Andrew, Gabriel, Joseph, Henry. So that's Andrew, Henry, Joseph, and Gabriel. And that, there's you know, happy birthday. <laughs> I can only say it was beautiful. <laughs> 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 I'm going to do confession in a little bit and we can... Oh, they can't sing, we can. So, as you've seen, um, the next resume is only putting so many people on the screen. So actually there's two screens when people see they, they pop up. Um, just to explain to the first place, so you, you haven't seen that. Is there anything... I keep wanting to look at the screen. Is there anything in terms of those of us who are joining by Zoom that you'd like to share with us? Something you want to... Thank God for, or something you'd like to ask the church family to be praying for. If that's if there's something, then um, please unmute and then hopefully your voice will be picked up and we'll be able to share it. Steve, Hi, Steve. Can I say something? Go for it, Steve. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, just that our son Chris with two others biked the coast to coast yesterday, leaving really early in the morning, getting back about eight, half past eight. They did 150 miles for a Sheffield food bank, and it was brilliant, raising over 2,000 pounds. So, wow. I've got to brilliant. share. It's a little bit weak, but I think we might sleep back here. I think it's, it's, it's um, done the coast to coast. 
raising money for the food bank, and they just got back. I think that's what they yeah. shared. Lots yeah. of miles. I can pick up the number. Hundred and fifty. How many miles was it? Sid? One hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty miles on a bike. So we pray for his sore rear end, or we thank you God for the money raised, or both. <laughs> both. We're giving both. both. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Is there anything that I don't think so. You would, would like to share with your church family would do that season? easily, wouldn't he? Come on up uh, again, if you don't mind, Miss. Just come in on behalf of the rest of us. If you come and stand with me. You can just greet uh, the Zoom family. You have to speak loud, just so, just in case you can't see. Nick has got welcome. God is good written on his face. And it's just the coming in together of the community of this congregation and the and Saint Lawrence's Church again to all to all. I know it's been open a while now, but to come together on a Sunday and. To to be able to sit and listen and join in with all the others on Zoom, I think it's been wonderful. Absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. Bless you. Thank you. God is good. God all is good. <laughs> <laughs> We're not superstitious, are we? So I'm just going to say it. This has gone so much better than I expected. <laughs> Let's thank God. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We join with Mick in his heart and his prayer. We thank you for the blessing of joining together, being reunited in worship. And it's, we celebrate that and we still notice the discomfort to not being as we were. And but Lord Jesus, we worship you. We thank you for Ziv. And we thank you for this day of gathering together. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We're going to move to a time of confession now. I've already confessed. I've probably spent a little bit too much time worrying about it today. Not trusting. Hopefully you don't throw stones at me because I think that's pretty human. But nonetheless, I've wasted time when I could have been Focus more on Jesus and use that time for other things. I wonder for you, what are those things where you think, I wish that this week had been different. I wish that moment hadn't happened. I wish I hadn't spent that morning in that train of thought. If only I could take those words back. If only I hadn't gone out of the bed to the wrong side yesterday. So we come to a time of confession, not to beat ourselves up, but to experience the wonderful gift of forgiveness. If you'd like to take your order service, I'll invite you to join in at the end. When I've been grumpy and irritable, when I've been hopeless at listening and impatient with others, when I've criticised our leaders more than I've prayed for them, when I've thought of only myself and my family, when I've moaned about the weather, when I've not been grateful, thankful, or encouraging, when I've neglected prayer and spending time with you. Lord Jesus, you know that I'm not perfect. Thank you that you are. Thank you that when I say sorry, you give me a fresh start. For a moment, I just encourage you to bring those things that your conscience bubbles up. And then if I can invite you to unmute, we pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, please help me to live for Jesus. Amen. I'm going to hand over now to Alison, our other church warden, for our second reading from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 31. 
Alison, if you'd like to unmute him. The second reading is taken from Genesis chapter 32, reading verses 22 to 31. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his eleven sons and cross, crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and the man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans, and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you, Alison. So as we've been doing in this season of COVID-19, we've been recording the sermons and posting them online so that it's not attached to the service and what we're finding is that other people outside my normal church congregation are, are viewing them. But I want to give you a little trailer to hopefully encourage you to go and seek that out. This morning you should have received an email. It's really simple, it's just you just click on the link. You can't go anywhere else, it won't take you to anywhere else. It will purely take you to my sermon. In my sermon, I explore the two readings that we have heard in our service. There are two powerful encounters, two powerful experiences of God's grace, the feeding of the 5,000, a miraculous event. And then in the reading we've just heard, Jacob, as it turns out, wrestling with God. Both really powerful encounters with God. But I hope I haven't done a disservice to the disciples. But I don't think, as I say in my sermon, that the disciples were in that sort of absolute spiritual sweet spot where they were full of faith and vim and vigour. I think the reading kind of indicates that they were tired and weary. Actually, they were mourning. And actually their plan for the day had been to get away, to give Jesus some time, and to probably themselves some time to mourn the demise of John the Baptist. And that's not how things happen. And then they come to the end of a long day. And as I said, I don't think they were in that place to kind of, yeah, we are on fire, we're full of faith, we're ready to go. And yet, God involves them, entrusts them. In a miraculous encounter with him. And then Jacob, it's a, a similar thing. An incredible encounter with God. This is the kind of encounter you read in Christian books, aren't you? Like, wow, I wish my testimony had something like that. But just my observation that he comes out of that encounter limping, bruised. That's maybe not something that we would immediately think of in terms of encountering God. But actually, probably if we're honest, it's actually something that we experience. Sometimes, as we encounter God, it can sometimes feel a bit bruising. It can feel a little bit tender as God puts his finger upon something that he's healing and working. 
Again, that's human, isn't it? We're, we're, we're capable of mixed emotions. It's both and, like we gathered this morning. We're celebrating to be together, but we're not together, and that feels uncomfortable. Jacob had a massive life encountering experience with God. But he lived, not forever, but he did live. Sometimes we think about how God's grace is out there for those who don't yet know. You know, that he'll do anything to draw him in. But sometimes we forget that that grace continues for us when we enter him. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to be in that absolute super duper spiritual hot spot where he can't use us. In our encounters with him, it might not always be completely comfortable and easy, but his grace is at work. Please don't use that as an excuse to now not go watch the sermon. Hopefully that's got you thinking. And as I say, there's an email, links for it. Here, you'd really like to have recordings of that, then Shep is able to do that, and then he does that for some of you. For a moment, I want to encourage us, whether we're online or in church, to, to have a sort of home moment, a moment of encounter. That's what we experience, that's what we witness in both our readings. And we're going to use a song to do that. Whether you're in church or online, but the words will be on the screen. I want to encourage you to just allow the words of this song to remind us of the love and grace that we have received in Jesus. And that that rolls on. It's not just when you make the decision, it's for eternity. So Paul, if you wouldn't mind sharing screen. If you don't know Jesus tonight, this song has been written with you in mind. The chorus says, come to the Father. You may feel like you have nothing to give. You might have a broken heart, broken life. But Jesus is standing here. Yeah. 
going to now come and lead us as the people of God in prayer. I'm going to continue in this uh, attitude of quiet. It's been a new experience coming here this morning. A new experience even for those that are Zooming to see a, the church here. And it's a time to just reflect. I want to keep, pick up that reflective attitude. Our minds can get so often full of words. And what's worse, our hearts are often clogged, clogged up with thoughts and ideas as well which leave little room for meeting God in simplicity and stillness. So what we're going to do this morning, we're going to have space to pray ourselves. I'll guide us with some thoughts and then we'll have silence. So first of all, let's just take a time to notice how many good things surround us, how much there is that we can take for granted and how much our lives have been blessed this last week with good people and enjoyable experiences. We pray now for some of those people and places in the news, things that maybe we've read in the Sunday papers, maybe we've seen on the screen on our computers or the TV screen during the week. There's so much going on at the moment. And sometimes we need a time to be silent before God and lift his love into those situations. We pray now for the church, the church as a whole, all the big issues of instructing us how to come back into church, all the things that we are faced with at this present time. We pray for our own church as we get some resemblance of normality where people are in church, but also the new way, the Zoom way. And we blend those together. We pray about that. We pray about opportunities. And we pray about problems. And we ask for guidance and grace for our church. Each of us have things on our mind, perhaps things we hesitate to mention to anyone else. But our Heavenly Father understands us totally and wants only the very best outcome for us. So let's be honest now and pray to Him. Pray out of our own hearts. These, Lord, are the prayers of your people this morning. We ask you to take each one of these prayers and answer them in your own time and in your own way. And in the meantime, give us expectant and trustful hearts for Jesus' sake. Amen.
and we continue our pattern as we have done since the very start of COVID-19. We're praying for our hospital staff, our care workers, all key workers and medical researchers. It's not a million miles away from where we live in Manchester and in that area where we've been reminded again that this COVID-19 isn't finished. And we need to pray for all those who serve us. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. We pray for all health workers, care workers and research scientists. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work, many will be restored to health. And then we turn to praying for those known to us who are sick or ill, in need of God's healing touch. Merciful God, we entrust your tender care. Those who are ill or in pain, know that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength. And if you wish, can I invite you as we do, for those of you on Zoom, if you'd like to unmute and share the names of those known persons, those on your heart, to pray for. Gordon. Anna. Yes, Eric. Ray. Brett. Barbara. Then can I offer that same invitation to those of us gathered here this morning in the church building? If there's anyone in your heart who you feel comfortable, please just name those people aloud. And then we tie all those prayers together in the words of the prayer that Jesus taught us. Again, if you're online, you'll be muted so that we can pray this together without distracting one another. So we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is now. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory of our Lord, and now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing if you're joining us by Zoom or listen to the words of the great, great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Paul.
face. God's faithfulness. I'm sorry for those of you who are joining us via Zoom. You can't see that we're joined by the Salvation Army Band, so you're just going to have to take our word for it. Um, and your singing sounded amazing. Um, do we have any children's creations? If you do, if you'd like to unmute um, and, and shout at us, then hopefully Zoom will pick you up and find you. Or maybe I might be Jane. Have we got anything? We got something to share there, Ed? Yeah? If you are mute. So I have got a scene of feeding of the 5,000. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's really good. I'm glad it's not the uh, John the Baptist bit I spoke of. That's a lot of heads you've taken off bodies. That's wonderful. Have we done? Oh, we can't hear you, Jane. You're muted again. You need to unmute, Jane. Joshi has done the prayer activity, so he's made bread and fish. So I can't hold it out because it'll all fall off. But you see, <laughs> made bread and fish out of Play Doh and put them into the hands, and we've been praying for people who don't have enough food. So that's just she's. We'll One fish. Oh, there we go. One fish. He's disappointed because it's not quite finished. <laughs> okay, is that a fish? A fish, yeah. A <laughs> few. <laughs> but we haven't got the lace yet. <laughs> well, there you go, yeah, brilliant, well done. I'm just checking that the birthday boy hasn't been created. No, it's okay. No. Okay. okay. So, by way of our notices, yeah, next week. One notice I need to make is that I'm doing the service next week, so you all got to be best behaviour. I wasn't the notice. <laughs> um, it, we're going to have an Ida Play meeting on. Now, if you haven't been along to the Zoom services, you won't know what I'm talking about. But it's difficult to have communion because only I could do it, and we'd have to take it. It wouldn't be straightforward. But an agape meal is that we bring our food. We bring a, a small amount of bread, a small drink, and we bring it with us and we go through a service. We heard about the feeding of 5,000 today. And a lot of what went on in Jesus' ministry was about feeding and eating together with people. So it's our opportunity to eat together. Now the folks on Zoom, if I say that and they've forgotten, they can nip into the kitchen and get something. You can't nip home. So please remember. And perhaps uh, if you book in, I'll ask Jess to remind you uh, as you book in. But uh, please bring. It doesn't matter actually what you bring, as long as there's a drink, bread, cake, biscuit. Let's have a feast and let's have it together. But please remember to bring something, or else you'll feel very left out. For our Zoomers, you'll know that Lindsay has become our specialist agape minister. Um, and um, it, it normally happens when Lindsay leads a service, but I didn't have the heart with all that we've been experimenting with. I didn't know how to do it in the day, so I didn't put that pressure on her. But it must have gone well because she's <laughs> decided to go for it and put that pressure on her. So, yeah, bring some bread and some grape juice or, or that kind of thing. That would be wonderful. Just to encourage you, the prayer meetings continue on Zoom on a Thursday morning and a Thursday evening. Just to encourage you and remind you, you can still make donations to Sanctus and the food bank, the back of church. That's been wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Wednesday services continue on Facebook at the moment. Although I think this has gone well, um, I need feedback from, from you who have been joining us via Zoom. 
but our instinct was with the PCC that we tend to the, the demographics of those who attend the Wednesday service that currently would be best equipped to remain just online, just via Facebook, um, because there is quite a lot of technology involved. We may review that in time, um, but yet the Wednesday service is posted on YouTube and recorded via Facebook. So, let's finish with our final prayer and then I'd like us to just do something else before we do our final prayer. So our closing acclamation. Creator God, may every breath we take be for your glory. May every footstep show you as our way that trusting in your presence in this world, we may be on this life, still be with you, where you are alive and reign forever and ever. Amen. 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 I just want to check, and this is completely with no expectation at all, and it will be completely appropriate for me to say so. Is there anyone who would wish not to be shown on this Zoom service? Just give me a little way of Zoom concert. On that basis, would you be happy if we attempt to swirl the camera around just for you to give a wave and should just give it. Sorry, Chef. <laughs> there we go. So just for you back at home, here's the those who've gathered here. Okay. And then Paul, if you wouldn't mind putting us on gallery view, I will try and do a little commentary. Uh, so we've got Esther and Dory, we've got Joan, we've got Rebecca, we've got Corbish Lids, we've got James Tiffany, we've got the Oakses, we've got Max, which is Steve Mayer, <laughs> we've got Jill Gogan, we've got David and Wanty, we've got Jim Davies and Slee, we've got Andrew and Maggie, we've got the Gibsons, Cap. Mike, Paul and Annie, we've got Gary, we've got Reg, we've got the Copelands, we've got the Wilshaws, we've got Maggie, we've got the Wellsteads, we've got David Lindsay, we've got the Oaks, and then Jimmy Lewis, and then the Spree. There we go. Oh, Steve, we've got 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 Steve, we We've got Anne and Bert, we've got Brian and Jimmy, we've got Eileen, we've got Jess, we've got Ellie with the shades on, we've got Phil and Julie, we've got the wonderful Paul, and well, Paul and Anne, I mean, but Paul being operating our technology. It's been good to be the people of God together, hasn't it? Let's finish with a prayer of blessing. Holy Trinity, we pray that in your grace we might glorify you in all things we do and say the same Amen. Amen. So the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you all. Amen. 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 For those of you who joined us via Zoom, genuinely it would be really helpful if you could email feedback to Jed in the office so he can pass it on to Lindsay for Sunday. As far as I'm aware, it's worked well, but to be honest, I have no idea what it's been like for you in your homes. And um, so if there are things that we can tweak, let us know, because each time the rules change, it's another learning experience. And likewise, for those of you mm -hmm. who have joined with us physically, mm -hmm. obviously there's limitations, we're not able to sing and everything, but if there's anything that we can 
learning great from us. Genuinely, we would welcome it because otherwise I just have to try and do it in my head. And it's much better if you just help. Uh, but thank you to Frank, who's got to grips with the keeping our volumes, which have been really helpful. Thank you, Carl, and Chuck, and Paul. Bless you. I don't know. We'll, we'll see whether, whether Lynn is feeling really brave, and we'll do breakout groups next week. We haven't forgotten that, Zoom people. It's just that we want to kind of minimise the potential perils. Um, so we'll explore how we can allow you to have a time of fellowship as we do. And we'll, we'll chat to one another here. But thank you for joining us in worship. And may you know God's blessings. I pray for you this week. God bless. Really good to worship with you. Give us a wave as you drop off. And if you want to stick around for a breakout group, um, for those of you on Zoom, I guess we can do that at the end. Thank you. Thank you. It worked well, yeah.